back to our study of evil. And an interesting study of evil is that we are on number 16. Do you know how many of these things you have to listen to to get the story? 15, including this one. I'm going to say it over and over. You've got to get them all. You can't nitpick. If we're looking at evil, evil is a sin. Evil may be a consequence of sin. Evil may be sin and a consequence. And what we're looking at right now, we, we turn to good versus evil. And we're on number six of what would be of many. And we've got 32 of them. We're doing five of the study we try to. So 1 Samuel 24, 17, as we're looking good versus evil or evil versus good. And we've seen a quite an interest here in our study to make you go back as we've looked at the introduction, which took two or three. Adjectives, bad deeds, criminal and capital punishment. Good is evil and evil is good. Now we're looking good versus evil. That's what you'll get with the 15 part series. <clears throat> Again, this is number 16, 1 Samuel 24, 17. And he said to David, this is King Saul, Thou art more righteous than I, for thou hast rewarded me good, whereas I have rewarded thee evil. So Saul has been chasing David with the intent of murder. David comes in, into a cave, Saul follows him, Saul sleeps, takes a nap or something, and David's men wants to kill Saul. And David says, nope, he's the Lord's anointed, we're not touching him. And David cuts the, the skirt. A piece of the skirt of Saul. And I just got to raise a little rabbit hole here. Men not to wear what pertains to a woman. A woman not to wear what pertains to a man. In the Bible, the men wore the skirt. Pretty good. That's the scripture that's, that's free. That didn't cost you nothing. So this is one of Saul's repentances. I think he has two or three of them. And four or five with Samuel. But it's a true statement. David has rewarded King Saul a good when King Saul was in the grass of David for murder. And if David would have killed him, it would have been murder. Because each of the time wasn't self defense. Saul is sleeping in a cave or something. Saul has not arisen to attack David personally. Saul has been out to kill David for no reason but an evil spirit and the threat of his kingdom. That's evil. David allowing King Saul to live is good. So the evil here is rewarding a good behavior with even the threat of of death and mind I you with your gun advocacy I'm gonna get a gun and I'm gonna defend myself will you kill somebody if they're not attacking you where does the threat go because King Saul was a threat constantly to David and David had two opportunities and David did not, did not kill. But his men wanted to. Now I'm telling you, you, you take a weapon and you kill somebody and they're unsaved. You are sending a lost soul into hell if they're lost. I'm the, you need to read Fox's Book of Martyrs. That's a very fine line. 
I'll tell you how far he is. Second Samuel 19. You go ahead and defend. What would you do, Sally? I'll, I'll trust in the Lord. And listen, I was saved. And I had a drunken idiot pull a 45, loaded, safety off, finger on the trigger, and put it to my temple. I forget which one. In a bathroom, in Nauta, not Nauta, uh, Hawthorne Drive in New London, Connecticut. Because I didn't clean my razor or something. And that idiot, as drunk as he was, would have pulled that trigger. I was saved. I was out of the will of God. I was a backslider. And that guy would have pulled that trigger. I'd be in glory now with no reward. What did God do? God protected me. I don't even remember how God protected me. Here I am now preaching the gospel, teaching the gospel, teaching people, and gaining reward. I've had, I've had many tools in that bathroom I could have used. I'm not just blowing smoke. 2 Samuel 19, 35. I am this day four score years old, 80 years old. And can I discern between good and evil? Can thy servant taste that which... Okay, that's what we need to do. This is for Zerai. This is a guy that's helped King David. And King David wants to reward him for his help. He's like, King David says, come with me back to my kingdom and I'll take care of you. And the statement here, here's an elderly man. And he's taking care of King David. But he's a wise man. And what his wisdom is telling us, that there is a evil and there is a good. And there is a good and there is an evil. An 80 year old man. And he says, I have the discernment. And as I get on with my old age. And he's stating a, a, a sorry fact is, as I get older, I'm getting a hard time to distinguish between, between good and evil. And evidently, the world's in that condition, too. The world, I believe, mankind is coming up to 6,000 years old, somewhere around there. And it has not determined the right that if you think you're a sex other than male and female, that's evil. The world calls it good. It has not discerned the evil that a man sleeping with a man is evil. The world calls it good. And that the good is to stay married, a husband and wife. The evil is divorce. Now, Jesus said adultery. I go to church and there's a billboard on the, on the side of the road. A lawyer advertising had enough, divorce, and then their phone number. That is evil. Just because you've had enough, that's evil. It is evil of the world, but good through the Bible, if you properly discipline and chasten a child that is your child. I am going through medical issues right now. and It is evil that the people who are supposed to be doing a job does not do a job. And make excuses. That I have to make telephone calls and I have to run around and do their job. That's evil. They get a paycheck and they believe it's good. And the man is saying, as I get older, I'm having a hard time. And there are diseases out there, for whatever reason, that will bring 
a person to a ripe age and their senses are being or has been lost. And a Christian can get such a mind and such a condition too, you won't be able to determine a good and evil. But there is one. Now we went to a study where evil was good and good was evil. The world is good to be a sodomite, but you know, traditional marriage, that's wrong. That's evil. There's a good of diet and there's an evil of diet. There is good and nutritious food. And I'm speaking to myself now because I, I don't eat that food as much as I should. And I choose the evil food. And what is the evil of me choosing food that is not proper for my health? What is the evil? Diabetes. Is diabetes a sin? Absolutely not. But diabetes, and one half of the cause, is a evil of people who don't eat properly. Now, there are diabetics who are diabetic because it is properly in their gene. It's hereditary. And no matter what they eat or what they drink and how measured life they live, they will be a diabetic. But the diabetic that's holding sugar, candy, ice cream, soda pop and <coughs> all the time now I, I live a measured life I know somebody real close to me ate fast food ate fast food didn't live right didn't care and died a miserable death but we need to realize okay age may be a problem and we better be brought up in a proper church with a proper spouse with the proper knowledge of the Bible you better have a church as King James because you're not going to get good discernment of a modern Bible and you better get yourself in a family of God and raise your family by God through the King James Bible so if you become old and unable to discern, hopefully, properly, prayerfully, you have raised somebody that will help you. And this gentleman sends a servant off instead of himself. He should have went with David himself and said, okay, David, I'm having a problem with old age. I'll take your offer, and can I rely on you to help me? Is this good? Or is this evil? And we have right from wrong and wrong from right. Job chapter 2. Oh, you missed my evil. Uh, the one I, I, I. We have 54 pages of evil. We're on page 14. Now, we are not going to cover every. I, I know we're not going to cover every time evil shows up in the Bible. But we're going to hit something on the head. And right now we're looking at evil versus good, good versus evil. In opposition to good is evil and evil is good. So Job chapter 2 verse 10, verse 9. This is Job's wife. Then said his wife unto him, Job, does thou still retain our integrity? Curse God and die. Now, let me just stop there for a moment. Now, if you've read the book of Job, Job has just lost all his livestock. Job has lost most of his servants. He has lost all his sons and his daughters. His wife has not been touched. And Job is now in pain of boils from the top of his head, the crown of his head, to the soles of his foot. Now, let me tell you, in my lifetime, I've had two boils on my back. Let me tell you, two of them, two different times. One one time it healed, and I had one one time and it healed. Not like Joe. Let me tell you, boils hurt, boils are 
disgusting. Boy, I had a boil. I hope I'm not making. I had a boil shoot the pus across the room in a stream. I'm serious. Boils take a lot of care, and you have to be careful in who's taking care of you because a boil can be passed on to somebody else. It's uh, it can infect somebody else. I, I forget what the word is. Contagious. So Job is going through all this, and his wife is going through all this, but she's not suffering. And she walks up to Job, instead of hugging and kissing him and helping him, don't you just curse God and drop dead? Don't you be a wife like that. Don't you be a husband like that. But he said, Job said to her, his wife, thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. There you go, Job. What? And this is one of the verses that started this study. Shall we receive good at the hand of God? Good. Money. Bills paid. Hell. Good running car. A good job. A good church. Good health. I don't know if I said that. Ability to get eyeglasses if your eyes go. Have good food. Good children. A good Bible. Good place to live. Are we not for the good that God gives us, right? Now this is this is what this is one of them verses. I'm sorry, my I know. This is one of the verses that this is what started this verse, this study. And shall we not receive evil from who? From God. God gives good. Good job, good car, good family, good church, good. It also says that God gives evil. It did not say God sinned. It does not say that God promotes sin. This is why we're studying evil. Evil can be a sin. It is evil for a man that is married to go looking at other women and be with another woman that's not his wife. That is evil. Okay? A child that has been born of an STD, a sexually transmitted disease, is evil. Is it a sin? No. What did that child do? He didn't do nothing. What about the person that caught the STD by at sin and evil? But the child that is born with an STD The evil is the STD, but there's not sin. The, the apostles came up to Jesus one time. Here's a blind man. Who sinned? This man's parents? Or he did sin to be blind? Jesus said neither. So we got to understand, we're coming to, to an understanding now of one of the three verses that started this study. God does not sin. God is holy and righteous. But Job says, shall we not receive good, good money, good job? Shall we not receive evil? Lost job. Car breaks down. Doctor says it needs surgery. Bad grade. We're stuck in a house because the government shut the country down. Car virus is an evil. Is it sin? Yes. Is it evil? Yes. Is it sin? No. Is it evil? Yes. Wait a minute, Sally. How can it be sin and not be sin? Let's say somebody caught coronavirus, if they catch it, I don't believe. But let's say they caught it and they haven't sinned to cause it. They just, they breathe the wrong air. Is it the person's sin that he breathed the wrong air to get coronavirus? No. Is coronavirus an evil? Yes. It got it. Can somebody get coronavirus because of sinning? Yes. When we went back in the study, you got to get all 15, now 16. Is marijuana plant... Is marijuana plant evil? 
No. Is it sin? No. Can it be sin? If you roll it up in paper and smoke it, now it is sin. Despite what the government says. You go to the doctor, you smoke marijuana, you go to the doctor, your brain has been fried. That's evil. Evil can be sin, and evil can be no sin and the consequences. And evil can be a sin and a consequence. Here we go. A man goes to a bar, he gets intoxicated. Is that evil? That's a sin. Drinking is a sin. Getting intoxicated is a sin. He gets in his car and drives. That is a sin. He's going down the road, and you've got a car with a family, or you've got a car with somebody in that car. Okay, they're by themselves. They're driving their car. They're, wherever they're going, wherever they're coming from, they're just driving down the road, and that drunk driver nails that car. An auto accident. And the person that was who was not drinking ends up in the hospital, and for whatever reason, they are injured for life. Did that person coming home or going to, did they sin? No. But have there been evil now they're in a hospital because of an auto accident? Yes. What did they do to, to cause the evil, the auto accident? Nothing. They were going somewhere or they were coming from somewhere. It was the intoxicated individual who sinned. And sometimes the intoxicated driver... Sometimes they get out scot-free of medical, but now he's got to get lawyers. Now he's in trouble with the law. That evil. And evil, let me let me put a, 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 a drag rabbit and let me tell you something free. It is evil for a lawyer to stick up for an alcoholic that has gone out, gotten drunk, DWI, and, and ruined somebody's life. It is evil for that lawyer to stand up for that intoxicated little person who drove a vehicle intoxicated. You're scum in my book. You're scum. It is a sin to drink any alcohol beverage. It is a sin to, to make your body completely disenabled by alcohol and is illegal and is a sin to go out and drive an automobile and you're scum you're scum if you stand up and plead for a man that's intoxicated that drove a vehicle and ruined somebody else's life that's evil that's a sin so there is a difference between evil there's a difference between good. And Job, again, one of the verses that started this thing, Job said, shall we not receive good at the hand of God? A good job, a good car, good family, good, I mean, get a good paycheck. Shall we not receive evil? You lost your job. Your health is not doing well. And you've done nothing. You Company downsizing. Your bodies just get old and frail, like we, we talked about the man in, in Samuel. They are the author of God, Job 1 and Job 2. God may allow the devil to bring troubles in your life. Good. Any, God can give you $100, and God can take away $200. What do you... I did my checkbook today. I lost $70 somewhere. Did I do evil? Well, I did evil, and the fact is I miscalculated somewhere, but is that a sin? No. It would be a sin if I went to the ATM to start taking money out and just start using my card with no regard to what money was in the bank, as some people do. I know a man, you know, he just flaps down his his card, he goes to the ATM, and he doesn't even keep track what's in the account. That's evil. 
And then when your bank has been overdrawn and you've been charged, which he doesn't care, that evil is because you sinned against your checkbook. Now, if I accidentally or if I made a mess up or screw up on my checkbook and unknowingly, unknowingly, and, you know, I got to pay a $15 fee or whatever or lose $15, that's an error. That's not a sin. It just may be miscalculation. I didn't do it purposely, and I didn't do it without any knowledge, but I got evil. I lost money. I come up to my checking account. I'm doing my checking. I figure it out, and hey, and this sometimes happens. I've got extra money. That's a good. Sometimes I lose money. That's an evil. God's in charge of my money. And, and Lord Jesus, did this man's family sin or did he sin? Neither. For God's glory. So, Job 30. So that's Job chapter 2 is what started, one of the three verses that started this study. <coughs> Job chapter 30. <coughs> You got to realize there is a right and there is a wrong. The world will tell you the wrong is right. We've already studied that. Evil is good. And the world will tell you what is good is bad. We've already studied that. The Bible. And hopefully a good pastor of a church as I have in my church. And I've, I've sat under some pastors that did not. Will spell out, this is good, that's sin. Do this, don't do that. That's right, that's wrong. And there are many churches today, pastors, pastorate, priests, and they're not telling you what is good. They're telling you what is bad. And I'm trying not to go evil is good and good is evil, but you, you got to get into it when we're looking at what good and evil is because there are people who get it messed up. Job 30, 26. When I look for good, Then evil came upon me. I'm involved in the street ministry here in Daytona Beach, Florida. And I preach on the streets. I preach the gospel. And we pass out gospel tracts. And I want to see people get saved. I My main two things for the ministry is, I want to see lost people come to Jesus Christ for their sake. I want to see him get saved. I want to see Christians grow in the Lord. I don't want to see them be infants their whole life. I don't want to see them spiritually retarded. I want to see them grow. I want to see them get to age, all the age. I want to see them be able to get rewards. But you have to know what is good. And you have to know what is right. The Bible state says abstain from all appearance of evil. And we're looking at the, cl the classification, the definition of good and evil. There's a difference. Abstain from all appearance of evil. What's that? I don't know if I have them. I don't usually, I don't usually get them no more. Alright, well this is a this is a white and purple pen. Let me, I got a white pen here. See it? Right, people on SoundCloud will be like, you on the video, watch this, ready? I got a white pen. I'm doing my work. Okay, what's wrong with that? What's this look like? You across the room, what's that look like? Does this look like I could have a cigarette in my mouth? 
Do you want people to think you, I know it's a pen, but could it look like a cigarette? Tell me across the room, say, hey, you know that Christian over there? The one that's working on his desk? Yeah. He's got a cigarette in his mouth. That don't look right. Get those white things out of your mouth. It was not a cigarette. But stay from all appearance, it looks like a cigarette. You go down the road, you got a, you got a Coca-Cola bottle in the bag, brown bag, and it's a Coca-Cola, nothing else, Coca-Cola. For me, cherry Coca-Cola bottle. I'm going down the street, and it's in the brown paper bag, and I'm drinking cherry Coca-Cola. That's it. That's all it is. Bought it in the store, opened it up, did not add. To, I am drinking cherry Coca-Cola in a brown paper bag. What does it look like? Is cherry Coca-Cola good? I got you. Yeah, for a diabetic, no, it's not good. All right, but let's let's do it. Let's take for diabetes. Glad you saw that. But let's can't say, can't say soda. Well, let so cherry Coca Cola is good compared to alcohol. Okay, drink a cherry Coca Cola. I can't say it's good because it. I've got a bottle of water. I got a plastic bottle of water I bought in the store. In a, is water is drinking water good for you? Yes, it is. Is it good? Yes, it is. In a brown paper bag, is it good? It's good. Drinking it? Yeah, it's good. But what does it look like? Have you seen other people drink fluids from a brown paper bag? I have. And you know what that fluid is? It's usually vodka, beer, or any alcoholic beverage. You're doing something good, right? You're drinking a water. But what does it look like? Something good now looks bad. Same from all appearance either. This verse here, I look for good. So like I said, I, I'm involved in the street ministry in, in uh Daytona Beach. I want to see people get saved. I want to see Christians grow. Well, I'm looking for good. Well, what evil come? I've had the police called on me many times. I've had to get their lawyers and my lawyers together. I get people to come up in my face and cuss me out every word. I had a woman one time pull the wires out of my court. They have hired a DJ many times to try to outdo my preacher. To drown out the preaching of the gospel. I have people who hate the preaching of the world. Now the Bible says, marvel not the world hates you, but it's the same. I go for good with the gospel. Gospel means good news. And I get hatred. You may be a good employee. Go 30, 26. You do your job. But Sam got the promotion. Sam doesn't do nothing. You do all the work. While Linda got the credit for your proposal, for the work you've done, Sam got the position you didn't. You have done good, and evil has come your way. Going in the grocery store to get some groceries, eggs, milk, cheese. You go to the, the checkout counter and somebody comes in and robs the checkout counter and has also stolen your money out of your wallet. You're going in there for egg, cheese, and milk. But you were robbed. You went in for good. You got bad. I know one time I took my wife. She loved strawberries. We went to a place. Bought her one of those big flats of strawberries. Big one. And her eyes, she goes, wow, she loved it. We got home the next day, realized it was this red goo all over the place. Strawberries are good. But that guy had loaded all the bad strawberries on the bottom and put some good ones on top. I tried to be good. She got the evil.
you love the Lord, you serve the Lord, you got more talent than the Lord, you go to church like the Lord, and that other guy is, has been put into a position that you feel is more appropriate for you. You're doing good. I'm not necessarily going to call it evil, but you think it's evil. That's the world. There are times when we should get the good, but instead we get the evil. And isn't it great we have a righteous and holy judge called God the Father, whether it's saved or lost, at the judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment. Isn't it great that God is going to weigh it out? And if you deserve the good and got the evil, you'll get the good. But if you've done evil, you're going to get the evil. And many times in your Christian walk, you're going to do good and you're going to get evil. Paul said, have I not become your enemy because I've spoken to you the truth? All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Did not Jesus do good? He did. What did they give him? They gave him the cross. For what? Doing good. And even Pilate said three times. Even the Herod said once. And even the dying thief said, there's no fault in him. He's innocent. He's done nothing wrong. The good that Jesus did, he still suffered and died on that cross. It's going to happen to you. There's a difference between good and evil. Sometimes that difference you don't get. And then you go back into again, evil is good and good is evil. Because that's how the world and that's how people react. You don't always get the good that you should for the good. Psalm 37. I'm just trying to warn you. If I'm going to be a Christian. I'm going to step out. I'm going to live for the Lord. And there's going to be many times in your life. Why on earth did that happen? Psalm 37. I'll give you one instance. When, when God called me to preach, I told my wife, Lisa, I said, God's called me to preach. I said, what do you think we should do? Lisa says, well, let's go talk to the pastor. Okay. We went to the pastor's office, her and I, we sat down and said, I think the Lord called me to preach. We talked. It was a Sunday. Sunday night, we came back to church. And the pastor from the pulpit, while we were there, he said, Somebody being called to preach in this church, and we're going to bring him to school. We're going to teach him in school. We're going to give him all the training he needs to do. Lisa grabbed my hand, held my hand, and the pastor out of the pulpit called out a man named Joe. So, me. As far as I know, no discredit to Joe. Joe turned out to be a, a, not too well in the Lord. That's all I'm going to say. It's going to happen. I have done a good job. I have been told I'm a dedicated worker. Unofficially. An unwritten down paper, I've been told we're letting you go because you're a Christian. But the paperwork says, I got one job that didn't even give me no paperwork. It fired me because I was a Christian. And then dawned on to me afterwards, you didn't give me no paperwork. You're a dedicated worker, but your faith in Jesus and in how you are, we can't stand that here. We can't have it. Got to let you go. I've been fired because the bumper stickers on my car. I had a church one time. I had the pastor take the keys of my car and move my car out of a handicapped parking spot for my wife. 
because he didn't want his visitors to the church to be offended in all the bumper stickers. The bumper stickers on my car are all scripture. I cut off the pictures of the, uh, I mean, this is it, but the pictures of Jesus on the cross. I cut those part off. I don't think we should have images of Jesus. And so it's just a scripture, and it's all scripture truth on the cross. You think, well, the pastor of a church, he should love it and all that. Not all of it. You're going to do good for the Lord. You're going to do good for the job. You're going to do good for the family. And sometimes you're going to get evil. That seems to be one of the things with life. Psalm 37, 27. Depart from evil and do good. How simple is that? You've got to know what good is and you've got to know what evil is. You can't have good as evil and evil is good. There are churches and Christians that are involved with modern Bibles. That's evil. They are not doing the good of the King James. There are Christians out there, I oh, let my light shine. They are not preaching the gospel. They are not getting the gospel out. That's evil. Good is telling people about Jesus. They're not doing it. And their churches don't do it. And their pastors don't promote it. My pastor of the church right now is going to spend weeks on witnessing and telling people how to witness and how to tell people about Jesus. That's good. I guarantee there are people that go to their pastor and say, Pastor, I saw this guy, he's yelling and screaming at a farmer's market, and he's supposed to be doing it in the name of Jesus, in the name of the gospel. And I guarantee there are pastors say to him, Well, he's a fanatic. There's people who, you know, they're just crazy like that. We, we, we don't act that much, you know. We let our light shine, and we let our work, and there's no thing in the Bible. There are people who know the Bible says, study, show thyself for truth unto God. And yet they watch TV more than they read the Bible. Reading the Bible is good, but they won't depart from the television. There are people who know they're supposed to be in church on Sunday morning. And yet they depart the good of going to church and they go out on the boat to go fishing. Fishing is not evil. It's fun. But if you're supposed to be in church listening to the word of God, evil's good, good is evil. You know? Oh, I don't have any other time, then. You need to get in church, you need to pray for time. So, evil is not, evil is something Evil's not, evil, when the Bible says to do something and you don't do it, that's evil. When the Bible says not to do it and you do it, that's evil. And again, evil is not good. Evil is a consequence of man's sin. As Job said to his wife. Shall we not receive good? Hey! Shall we not receive evil? Uh. What was the evil in Job's case? He lost his livestock, he lost his servants, he lost his children, and he's got the boil. And then evil is right from wrong, we learn with David in Saul. By the way, right and wrong with... with uh, the elderly man that took it, came to David. And we know that evil and good is rewarding good behavior in the threat of death. You need 16 studies of this study. So when the Bible says, Psalm 37, 27, Depart from evil, you need to study to know 
what is evil. Because you may be deceived to think that what you're doing is good can be actually evil. And you could be learning that in church. Marvel not, my brethren, if Satan is transformed to an angel of light and his ministers, Paul writes to the Corinthian church. You need a King James Bible and this study to know what evil is and to know what good is. And you have all liberty to share, to like, to subscribe, to pass out, to give to your friends and your enemies. And to rewatch and download and put to a CD. Type it out. Pass it out. Hand it out. Give it out. Free of charge. Don't you charge anybody. I ain't charging you. And if you any means cut or splice and change whatever I say of this original recording that between you and God I'm here for the glory of God the Hayward Family Ministry find us on YouTube SoundCloud and Facebook again like us subscribe to us share us get us out tell everybody the man with the King James Bible. Not ashamed of the King James Bible. You must do right. In order to do right, you've got to know the difference between evil and good. This is the 16th study. You need them all. Lord willing, next week we'll do 17.